Uh, thank you all very much. Uh, I'd love to find out whether people uh, do have questions. And if you do, I, it would be great if you could go to this mic here. Um, while people are thinking about that, please go. I'd uh, like to um, uh, raise a question that really has been, um, I think it's, it lurks uh, whenever we discuss this, which is uh, how much of this work as a filmmaker do you have to do by yourself and how much uh, can you delegate uh, to other people? If you're a filmmaker, I was in that meeting with uh, Whitney and Marco and I remember when they said, clips, website, <laughs> We made a movie. It's a narrative. We don't want anybody to stop and click. That's right. Uh, and it was a completely reasonable filmmaker's response. So I, I, I would love to, and, and you as a, as a, a provider of outsourcing services, I was at Robert. the table, too, and we said, yeah, outreach, that's what we do. So we took over that campaign, actually, post-broadcast. There were a lot of partners in front of it, but the other piece of that, that was to get them to understand that, that their film... Some of the most, I think, if you ask now, Whitney and Marco, what are the highlights of the film's broadcast? Mm -hmm. Certainly that was a highlight for them. An extraordinary PBS audience. But can, you, can they talk to you about going to a place like Paducah, Kentucky, where better than 10% of the town's population saw that film and have made very concrete changes and about how that town has a public dialogue around race? Yes. Were they there for that? Yes. Is that powerful for them? Yes. Is, do they have high investment now in outreach? Yes. Are all their new productions now have an outreach component? Yes. Uh, let's go to our first question or comment. Um, and could you introduce yourself, please? Yes, my name is Laura Scott. Um, I'm a producer, writer, producer, director from Roanoke, Virginia. Uh, I am working on a documentary. I'm just finishing up the development on um, Chalice by Choice Couples. As part of my development project, um, I have I designed a questionnaire with the help of a sociologist um, to do a survey of over 65 Chalice by Choice individuals. That data, I think, is important um, that I, are, I'm willing to share. I'm obviously a documentary filmmaker, not a sociologist or a scientist. So my, my aspect of outreach and what, what I intended to do as, as part of an outreach campaign is to work with sociologists and work with other scientists, researchers, to basically, um, the intention is really to spark some scientific inquiry and research into the motivations and decision-making processes mm. of chalice by choice couples. Um, nobody's done anything like what I'm talking about in a very long time. We had some uh, researchers and sociologists back in the 70s and 80s that sparked a lot of wonderful debate and inquiry into Childless by Choice, but nothing's been done since. What can you tell me about how to design an outreach campaign that will reach these researchers, sociologists? I think we'll, we'll save the individual consults for the networking time. But the question that you're asking, I think, is supposing you have uh, data that's being generated in your research that you want to share with the scientific or other community that is is not really an audience but is That's an entirely correct. different community. Do people have any experience in that regard that they can speak I, to? I want to just speak very quickly to that because evaluation is something that I think is quite critical in terms of funding because funders for projects want to know what the impact is. And I'll just mention the National Science Foundation who is a part of their uh, informal science education program grants process requires both a formative evaluation at the beginning <coughs> and then a summative, quantitative at the end. But they, they do that to actually quantify and evaluate what the impact has been on the target audience. So I would, that's a good template, I think, in beginning to look for evaluations. And FOIA will give you the names of their list of evaluators who regularly do this you know, across the board. Okay. One of the things we learned in, in starting advisory organizations, uh, groups to a particular film, including activists, including people who are organizers, including folks from the community you're talking about, is we ask them, basically, where do you all meet? Do you meet once a year? How do you communicate to each other? Is there a way that you're not communicating? Is there a way that this film could be a catalyst for you to communicate across this issue? I mean, they're really your best resource, and I think you need to really mine their knowledge about both how they communicate and how they're not communicating, mm. and look in to embed some of that potential into your film. I'm Marcia Smith. I'm executive director of Firelight Media in New York. Um, and 
we have a few success stories in outreach and a few horror stories. Uh, one of the success stories I'll have to thank Judith Helfand for, actually, because she's the one who gave us the idea of doing a postcard. At, b between Judith Helfand and our audience, we try to listen to the audience when we screen the film on Emmett Till, and people were so mad. And Judith said, well, give them a postcard, give them something to do, which turned out to be unbelievable uh, in terms of um, actually producing the response in part in the end of reopening the Emmett Till case. So I have to thank Judith Helfand. Well, well, thank you, Robert, too. Thank you. Um, my question is about how you think about building the expertise to do outreach in relation to particular audiences. Because one of the dilemmas that we face is that, um, you know, over time we've built relationships with organizations that we've done outreach for different films for. for right. um, but then we kind of start up again, the next film, we start up again, the next film. We don't have a way either to sustain the relationship, we don't have a way to um, nurture a relationship, in, but we don't have the capacity to do that because we're off making the films. Um, and one of the dilemmas, I, I think, for me in thinking about it with a couple of different hats on is how do you think about building the expertise in reaching a particular audience over time and what relationship does that have to the filmmaker? as opposed to the group that may be doing the outreach. Does that make any sense? Yeah. yeah. Okay, who wants to start with that one? I guess I, I guess I see your distinction between the outreach organization's relationship with the community versus the producers. I was going to first respond to that by saying, like, Judith Rabbit and Ken Rabbit here have developed this rich and deep and trusting relationship with the faith community around various projects they've done. Um, I. I don't know if their producers always maintain that relationship. I know Todd has with his, but you know, Todd's everywhere and he just calls you all the time and on Saturdays and Sundays and so he just, he has the ability to maintain those relationships. But I think, I think one of the things I would do is one of the tactics that the stations use and that is to set up advisory groups for their work. So Firelight Media works in the community all the time anyway. <laughs> if you set up a, you know, a six or seven or eight person advisory group, some of the people who have helped you in past projects, this is a touch point for things, you know, connections, you know, it's like networking. You put them on your letterhead, you call them once a month, maybe you have a conference call once a year. Mm -hmm. It's not hard to do and they feel, because people want to be involved in television. You know, they got to do it that one time and it was really sexy and they want to be able to do it again. Yeah, I, and I would suggest also is that part of the relationship building you're doing is the sustain the relationship might not be between you, the producer, and that organization or that collective that community or that movement, but the idea is that you, I mean, there's some relationship building you need to do, a lot of work in the beginning, you need to make sure that you sustain it through the broadcast if there's a broadcast. The hard work of the film is going to be like two years, and I think that's an investment people just have to make. But then, I think if you've done your work, in many times those relationships are ongoing. In many ways, your film is out there doing that work, embedded in the, in the work plans of some of these organizations that will be ongoing, and that sustains it in many ways. My name is Karen Hirsch. I'm a freelance writer and consultant. I write discussion guides. I write outreach grants. And I often write case studies looking back on a film's history. And my question is... I just uh, have to tell, you know, tell people to that uh, you are <laughs> also the principal author of a publication of the Center for Social Media called Digital Futures yeah. on mm -hmm. policy issues that affect filmmakers available on our website. 